Okay, so let's get started. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining this um, seminar. Uh, this is exploratory online seminar number 64, uh, collaboration with exploratory. Uh, we recently added a new features, um, team and project share. So we, um, I'd like to introduce those two new features um, and, and in a framework of sort of like, a, you know, how you can collaborate with others uh, when you work with exploratory. Okay, so uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Kan Nishida, CEO at Exploratory. We started Exploratory 2016 uh, to democratize data science. Uh, since then, we've been building the, uh, this tool called Exploratory to make the data science easier and more accessible. And also we provide uh, this type of the seminar and also training to share our knowledge and skills so that more people will be able to uh, use their own data to make their uh, better decisions. So our vision is everybody can make data informed decisions and to do, um, we think our mission is to democratize data science. And when we say the data science, we think of sort of like this workflow. You start with business questions and to answer with the data, you have to access the data first, then you need to clean or transform to get the data in the right format. And then you visualize or are using analytics algorithms to find patterns in the data to help you answer the business questions. And once you find the answers or any insights that help um, answer, the, answer the questions, then you wanna communicate with others because most of the time uh, you don't work by yourself, you work with others. So the communication is also the important piece of the data science workflow. So Exploratory provides the modern and simple UI to do these five things, data access, data wrangling, visualization, analytics, and communication. Um, so that's what the uh, Exploratory uh, desktop. So enough for the introduction. So let's get started Exploratory online seminar number 64, collaboration with exploratory team and project share. So the agenda, I like to start with sort of like basics of the exploratory, so how the desktop and the server works together. And then in order to explain those, uh, I, I'd like to also introduce the exploratory server lifecycle so that you can see all different uh, sort of like tasks and also the, uh, not only seeing the tasks, but also those tasks, how they can uh, come together uh, when you work with exploratory more efficiently. Uh, and also later on, like I'd like to introduce team and project share in the context of a collaboration. So exploratory desktop, like I said, uh, in a data science workflow, basically like you have these five things, you can access the, access the data that you can transform, uh, clean the data, we call it data wrangling, and then visualization and analytics and the reporting, which is basically the communication piece. And that's the exploratory desktop. Once we get some outputs, can be the data, can be the reports, can be charts, then you wanna publish to export to the server, which is basically our, our hosted uh, cloud server, then you can share with others or you can schedule to automate the reporting or report generation, data generation, or maybe you can reproduce with, um, so that you can work with others. Okay, so the new features I was talking about, the team um, with the recent release, I think it was, it was like a 6.8, so towards, um, I think the beginning of this year, we introduced this team, but I never had really a chance to explain or introduce this feature. So finally, I like to explain how we introduce in this seminar. And another thing is the project share. This one too, uh, I think it was the beginning of this year, but since then we keep adding, um, you know, incremental features to make it more, um, you know, practical in order to collaborate with others. Okay, so I'm gonna you know, talk about uh, more details later on, but let's kind of start with the exploratory desktop. So like a first thing I, uh, I like to um, talk about is what are the things that you can create and what are the things that you can actually share uh, with others or collaborate on. So in exploratory, everything is basically the project based. So you, you, when you start exploratory, you click on the create new and create a project. And a project is where you wanna, you can bring all the data and then you, you, know, you can work, you know, transforming the data, visualizing or analyzing the data and so on. So 
Uh, here is a kind of a left hand side, there's a data frame section. So you import the data and then you start seeing uh, you know, new data set on the right, left hand side. And each data you can uh, clean or transform that data. And then we call it data wrangling step on the right hand side. So everything you do in terms of the data wrangling, the operation gets automatically record it and add it as a step so that you can go back and forth and compare the result or make sure that you're getting the right result and that kind of stuff. And, and then once you get the data and you have the chart or analytics views where you can create the charts or you can use analytics uh, algorithms to analyze the data. Okay. And then um, once you have those charts and then data, then sometimes like you wanna create a report, uh, you can create a dashboard or you can create note to communicate with others or share it with others. So that's the uh, exploratory desktop side of things. Then you move to exploratory server we want you, uh, you know, publish. So this is like exploratory li uh, server life cycle. Basically there is like a, you start with a publish and share, view, schedule, discover, and reproduce. These are the things that you can do. So let's go about one by one. Publish, well, basically like all the things you create, you can publish and share. So data is one, note, and also dashboard, and then analytics, and then all of them has a publish button. And you click on it, and then like, you get the publish dialogue and publish. When you publish though, you can choose you want to publish in a private mode or public mode. Public mode is of course you, uh, once you publish, anybody can see it. Uh, but you know, most of the time, like if you, especially you're dealing with the business data, you want to publish in a private mode so that only the people who you invite, whom you invited can access to open those, you know, reports or charts and data and so on. Okay, and once you publish, you can uh, click on the link to open the you know, insights or data, in this case, and dashboard, and then the dashboard will be generated in your web browser. So that's the published part. And then like, after that, like, you can you know, move on to the share. So if you publish in a private mode, and then, then you wanna make sure, like, you are, basically you wanna invite you know, who uh, you wanna share with, right? So in that case, you click on the share button and then you have the sharing dialog where you can click, uh, you can type the email address or if you, the person you wanna share with already have the account, then the account name will show up. And otherwise just type the email and then you know, as optional, you can type in a message and click on the share button. Then the person who was shared will receive this email um, notification. Then that person can click on this view button. And if that person already has an exploratory account, then they have to uh, log in to open it, right? Uh, but if they don't have an account, then they will be asked to create the account. And this account is free. This is a view account. And then, so you can, you know, the other people just come and just all they need to do is just type the username um, and then uh, the password and then they can create a free account. And this is called viewer account. And then of course, later on, if they wanna use the export to desktop, then they can change the plan to a uh, paid plan so that they can start using export to desktop. But otherwise you don't, um, <clears throat> You don't need to, um, uh, you know, uh, subscribe any paid program or anything like that. Okay. So having said that, now you share. So next thing you want to do is you want to view uh, those reports and whatever the things that you publish or shared. So of course, the dashboard, the note, and then another thing, the chart, analytics, all those things uh, you can open in a web browser. But one thing it's really cool is data. Data seems like just a data, just a grid table, you know, basic stuff. But in order to view on the server or web browser, it provides you the three views. One is a summary view, the one that you usually see in an export desktop. And then the table view. The table view is kind of cool because you can type in to filter the data. And also when you click on the column header to sort the data, then it will show that kind of like a visual indicator or based on the, uh, uh, the values. 
And in a metadata view, that's where you can, so if you are the person who created this data and then publish it, you can type the description and also add the data dictionary information, meaning each column, uh, maybe like, you know, you might want to describe this column means this and that kind of stuff. So the metadata view is also very helpful for others to view that data. And then the data uh, view, uh, so I'm sorry, like a data when you publish, will have the download bottom. This is where like, you have to check the CSV or EDF option when you publish. But if you do so, then you will see this download bottom. And then the other folks can download this data in a CSV format or EDF, which I'm going to uh, explain more detail later. <clears throat> and also if you add the parameters, then the person who are shared with can use these parameters to interact with the dashboard. Not just dashboard, actually, you can interact with the chart, you can even interact with data, you can even interact with note as well. Okay, so these are the things that uh, uh, you can do once you publish. I mean, like, not just you, the post people you share with can do. More detail on the parameters, I have done that uh, seminar, so please take a look at it. Uh, you can find from our website, go to the learn and how to, and under the how, I mean, on the how to page, left hand side, when you scroll down, there's a parameter as a menu. When you click on it, uh, parameter related uh, note will uh, be shown, will be displayed. And then one of them is called uh, how to use parameters in Explorer. Okay. Then the view is over, and then now the next one, next thing is uh, you want to schedule, right? So if the data, underlying data, if you publish a data, or if you publish a dashboard, that you know that also has a data source. If those data sources are something that Exploratory Server can access to, so let's say the Google Analytics data, or maybe the Google Sheet or even like a database that is hosted on Amazon Web Service or something like that, then you can actually schedule it. Okay, and the cool thing about that is because then like, you can expect the dashboard to be always up to date, let's say the six, every six o'clock in the morning or something. So you can click on the schedule button, set up and then schedule. And then another thing is you can click on this subscribe notification mail. If you are the person who subscribe, then you can subscribe, I'm sorry, if you're the person you publish, then you can subscribe notification email. If you are, um, are, the, you are the person who was shared with, somebody else published, but you are shared with, then you can go to like a dot, 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 uh, bottom on the right-hand side, top underneath, there is a subscribe menu. You can click on it. And then basically what this subscribe is gonna do is every time the dashboard or data, whatever gets scheduled or scheduled jobs run, then you will receive the notification email with a thumbnail. Uh, if that, as a thing, you subscribe the dashboard or chart or that type of thing that has images. Okay, if it's the data and uh, there's no images, but the chart, dashboard and node and so on. Okay, so if, what I actually use this personally because once I subscribe, I receive this, uh, let's say like every seven o'clock in the morning and I can see all the KPI that I need to be aware of. So I don't actually have to click on this open button to open it because I can see all the numbers here at the latest, of, uh, uh, latest as the latest information. Okay, so that's the schedule part. It's really schedule is provide you to automate your reporting or data generation. And it's cool to like publish and share and all that, but you know, first one is cool, but then like after that, like you share, or I'm sorry, you publish like a 10 or 20 reports, then you start feeling like, hey, where are those reports? What have, have I published? And that's where this cover, uh, this, this, uh, this cover comes in. So when you go to uh, export to the website and then under the, your account uh, menu, there is a menu called My Insights. When you click on this, that's where like you can see all the things that you publish. So can be dashboard, can be data, can be note, all the things. And then like, there are parameter at the top so like you can kind of change those uh, uh, parameter to uh, you know, filter out to find the thing that you're looking for. 
And not just yours, maybe like, you know, some other folks, uh, you know, publishing every day. So you might, you, if you're interested in, you can uh, go search menu at the top underneath there's a search insights or search data. And from there, you can find, you know, a dashboard and charts that other people publish. This is where you can actually go to the, uh, to even today, even if you haven't published anything, but you can see like how, what other people on the exploratory are publishing and then doing. Okay. And then last piece, last but not least is a reproduce step. To us exploratory, like I think this reproduce is very important part of this whole data analysis or data science workflow, because Without this, like how can you trust or how can you improve uh, data or analysis that you create or other people create? So this reproducing step is a really key important part. That's why uh, when you go, you can publish and you can click on the EDF button. EDF means exploratory data format, how created with that. Uh, but, uh, it is really the reproducing, uh, reproducible data or the, um, the insights if you will. So click on the download button and you see the EDF. When you click on this bottom uh, menu, then go back to the exploratory, you will see uh, import EDF menu, or this with a recent release, you can actually drag and drop into the exploratory uh, as, uh, as well as the CSV and the DF and other formats as well. But you can drag and drop or select this import EDF uh, menu. Then, the data will be reproduced, but not only that, right, all the steps on the right-hand side will be reproduced because you need those steps to reproduce that data. But not only that, there's another data frame if it's necessary to reproduce data, then that gets reproduced as well. In this case, this data has a join step with another uh, data frame. So that gets in, uh, imported as well. So everything it ne needs to reproduce the final data that is shared or that is published will be reproduced by importing this EDF. And not just for the data, but even the chart analytics too. And not just chart on the, on the analytics, but also dashboard and the note as well. So dashboard case is kind of, is kind of cool because when you download EDF, drag and drop or select the import EDF uh, menu, what is going to happen is dashboard gets reproduced or will be displayed, but all the charts and also all the underlying data frame and then along with the data wrangling steps will be reproduced automatically. So, um, <clears throat> So that's the really uh, the produce step. So you can, uh, when you publish, make sure that you check the EDF if you want other folks to reproduce that data. But if you don't, then don't check it. Okay, so that's the basic working of exploratory desktop and also exploratory server uh, in, in, uh, in this like exploratory server life cycle. Then comes back to this point, which is a team that one of the new features that we added to make the collaboration easier. So with uh, that, I mean, not with, but when you go to our website and then from, uh, you click on the right-hand side top, uh, some kind of like account, menu, account bottom, and then in that menu, there's account setting. Usually you go to um, this page, account setting page to change your plan or change your email address uh, or uh, so on, or profile information. But there is a team section now, and that's where you can manage or you can create new team. And let's say that like, you click on add new bottom, then you will see you, you're gonna be in a team setting uh, page and that's where like you type the team name team name has to be um, on the alphabet or uh, numeric numbers or dash or underscore so it's kind of restricted about that uh, because this one is going to become the url when you uh, pub when you use the team to publish something which i'm going to uh, explain that more detail but that's a team name but the, you can use you can override the, in the display name so the display name is the one that most of people, like the people uh, that you know you and also uh, your team member members will see. So the display name, and then you can type in a description. 
And then under the member section, like you can start adding uh, other folks. This is very similar to when you invite others when you share that. So you can type uh, all the export to the user accounts. And then if the other people like you want to add to didn't have the user accounts, then you want to ask them to create the user accounts first, export their accounts first. Again, this members doesn't have to be uh, exploratory desktop users. It can be just viewer users. So it's a free users um, as well. Okay. And then once you create a team and then the members who are, who are added to the team, we receive these notification emails and then they can go to the team page. And the team page usually like this thing, all the things that have been published. Okay. And the team, why you create a team? Uh, I, you might be guessing already, but there are two things why you want to create use a team. The one is a share. You can share with the teams. Another one is a publish as a team. So share is kind of easy to uh, imagine. So when you share, instead of like one by one, you can select the team that might contain, and uh, uh, let's say like four people or ten people, twenty people, uh, uh, whatever but it's much easier to share with the team instead of like one by one. So kind of like this. So like when, when you are the author at the bottom and then you create a four dashboards and then like you want to invite those four people. Every time you share, like you type in those names, uh, which is kind of like a conversion. So instead you want to create a sales team, let's say, and then like add those four, four people in that team. And then all you need to do is always share with that team. And the team take care of uh, inviting each people. This becomes a particularly, especially useful when you have to manage the people. In, what I mean by is sometimes some people leave the company, right? Some people leave not just company, but leave the organization or your team. And then what happened, like when you share the dashboard to like, let's say like four people, and then like one of them already left. So you don't want that person to have the access to your dashboard but then that means that you have to go to every single dashboard or charts on data to remove that person but wouldn't that be nice if you have just one single team and then all you need to do is just go to the team setting page from your account setting page and just remove that person and from that on then that person will not have the access to all the dashboards all the data you have published Okay, so it's much easier to manage and also make sure that like, all the people like you think it needs to be shared always get shared because you're making sure sharing with that team. And then you can create multiple teams. People can belong to different teams or people can uh, belong to multiple teams as well. Okay, so it's all it, basically like you create a team and then manage who uh, are going to belong to, you know, which teams can be multiple, can be single. And then after that, uh, export will take care of who are shared with, as long as you share with that team. Okay, so that sharing part is kind of uh, easy, uh, kind of uh, not, might not be easy, but it's a simple, uh, straightforward. But the, the cool thing about the team is uh, that you can publish as a team. So what I mean by that is, Usually, uh, you know, like if you are the author, you create a dashboard, uh, you, uh, you are export to the desktop users, we call it author, and then you publish a dashboard, right? And then the moment you dashboard, the people that you shared with start asking you, hey, can you change this chart? Can you add this? Can you change the number format? Can you add this KPI? The requests never stop. And then you are the author, like you get bombard bombarded by these types of requests. And then, you know, first couple of things is fine, but it started getting, uh, you can't do anything else. So instead, you are the only one who uh, can uh, edit this dashboard. How about like you add other people, other exploratory users, in this case, a desktop users, and then in that team, then that means anybody can edit the ones published. So what happened is when you publish the sales dashboard, and then usually if you publish as you, then the URL will have your user ID. Usually it's kind of hard to read, it's kind of an encoding value, but it's unique your, your uh, user uh, ID. But if you publish as a team, 
the URL will have the team name. So that another thing is actually cool is this part is using a team. So like, let's say you and then you have another, another two people in the team, right? And then uh, if let's say like one person who publish and then as that person, then the, you know, let's say like that person left the team or left the company or something, then, you know, like that URL is not going to be used. That person who canceled the exploratory plan, then that URL is not going to be accessible anymore. And it's kind of hard to republish that thing, the transport and kind of stuff. But if you publish as a team, let's say that you have the five people in the team and then one person left, but still the URL is available as long as any whoever um, created a team remains in the exploratory. So the URL will have the team name and then another person in the team can download the EDF and then use the exploited desktop to edit, let's say like add the new chart, add the KPI, right? And then that person is a Sarah in the right hand side and then republish it. But republish dashboard will replace the original dashboard with that same URL. So the other folks can access to this dashboard with the same URL, except we will see the updated version of that dashboard. Okay, and then once you publish as a team, what happened, like how can I find those team uh, dashboards? Well, in the menu, account menu, we added this my team insights. So it used to be like only my insights, but now you have my team insights. So under that, like you uh, can see all the insights that are shared by the teams that you, uh, you belong to. Okay, so that's the team. And the next is a project share. Um, this is really um, uh, started it as, um, um, as more export to the users, uh, then you, you know, like you start sort of like becoming a problem of like, like how to share this dashboard and charts, and then when you work with the others, and then um, the thing like I showed you, like you can share the dashboard, you can publish the dashboard, and then the other person in the same team can download and then work together. But the problem is, it's there are more than dashboard, one dashboard. You usually have a bunch of data, a bunch of charts. And even the dashboard and notes, you have a bunch of dashboards and the notes as well. So it never be just one dashboard, right? So um, in that case, why don't you, why don't we share the whole thing uh, instead of like publishing each, you know, data and chart and dashboard? Instead, why can't we publish the whole project? Then, you know, like the other people will access to this whole thing then they can start adding the charts, or adding even new data, and then like other people will be able to even access to those newly added objects, which is data on you know, charts and dashboard and so on. So what I mean by that is there is a publish button being added, left hand side top. Now you can click on this one to publish the project. And when you publish the project, um, of course, like, you know, you want to select the private mode or public mode or either way. I think most of the time, like you want to uh, choose a private mode, especially when you're dealing with the business data. But when you publish, as you have seen, now we have the team, right? So when you share the uh, publish the project, most of the cases, I would think you want to share or publish as a team instead of individual. You can publish as an individual, I, uh, as you, then that means another person who, you know, gets shared with the uh, project will work on that project by him or herself. I think most of the time, like you wanna collaborate. So typically like you wanna publish as a team. Then what happened is that exploratory server uh, we used to have an inside catalog where you publish the charts and dashboard and note and so on. And then there's a data catalog that's where you publish the data. Basically the kind of very similar experience, but there are two things. And then recently we have added this project catalog. In this project, that's where like you, when you publish, your project will be stored. This is all in our exploratory uh, server, uh, our hosted version, uh, cloud hosted version of the server. And then 
when you publish, you will see this confirmation dialog. And then it says, yeah, the default is on, but you can uh, you ask if you want to notify other team members when you publish as a team. Because sometimes, you know, like you publish and like, you know, you don't want to bother other people or, you know, especially when you have like a 50 people team or something like that. But it's good to notify them so that like other people know like what's going on, like what are the new items, new contents and stuff. Anyway, so you click OK. Then what happened is, other people in the team will receive this notification. This is not, by the way, this is not just a project. This is also for when you publish the dashboard or data, you will see this like a checkbox. You want to notify other people when you publish as a team. And then other folks will be notified by the email, receive something like this. And then they can open the button and <laughs> they can click the button to open the project. And then you, they will see a project description. Okay. And then once you see it, then the next thing other folks in the team want to do is they can download and import. With this release, uh, you want to click on the download button. And, uh, and then once it's downloaded, then you want to import the project. Um, with this, the reason I said with this really sorry for the Japanese at the top, but the reason I said this really is because in future releases, uh, you don't even have to go to the website and download separately. You're going to be able to find the projects directly within the desktop. But with this release, you want to download on the website and then open the export tree, desktop, and then import the project. Okay, and once you import the project, then you can edit, right? So like, let's say like you wanna bring in new data, you wanna create a new chart, you wanna edit the dashboard and so on. Then once you're done, then you wanna publish the project so that other people can take advantage of the work you have already done. So uh, you click on republish button. And then as long as you check that notification uh, box, then other folks in the team, other than you, will be notified by the email saying, hey, there's something updated. You typically, like, you put the comments of, like, why you updated, what you did kind of stuff. So the other people are like, oh, okay, it seems like something updated. And then they can, you know, open the exported desktop. When they all go to the project page, any project being shared will have, um, or shared meaning, like, somebody published then you import it or something, then we'll have that uh, auth icon. It's like a globe icon, left-hand side. In this case, at the top, the first project says operation. That has a globe icon. That means that project is being sh uh, published and shared on the server. The one doesn't never be published, never be shared. It's, it's all in your desktop. And then the one somebody republish, meaning somebody updated a project, then you're going to see some kind of a cloud with that downward arrow icon left hand side, and also update button in a green color. So these are the, this means other people updated the project and then now there's a newer version of the project on that server, at the server. So in that case, you can click on this update. When you click on this update, you will see the dialogue and then you can go to the project page and see like what other things that, that you know, being added on the project. And if you're cool, cool with it, you wanna uh, make it up to date, you can click on it and then that will uh, make your project to be the latest version. At this point though, we don't support those something called like a three-way merge, which means let's say like somebody updated the project and they published it and there's a newer version of the project at the server. And then at the same time, you're working on your project and then you come to this project page and it seems like um, somebody updated it and then there's an update button. If you click on this update button, what is going to happen is it is going to override your project with the latest project from the server. So if you have um, done something or changed something since last time I, you updated the project with the server version, uh, the latest version at the server, then that work will be deleted. So sometimes you gotta be, uh, so in that case, you gotta be careful. But if something like that happened, um, you can actually always go back to this project page 
And then um, I don't have that menu. So um, if, or maybe how about something like this, this update button, if I update it, let's say like I'm, I can click on this update button. Oops, I mistakenly opened the project. So let me just go back. Let's say, um, there you go. If I click on this update button and then I, okay, it looks like if I go to the open the browser and then I can see what are the things that are being updated. So there's a version history. And okay, these are the things updated, looks okay. So I'm gonna click okay to update. Then that latest version of the project will be downloaded and override. And after override, maybe like I, you know, I open the project and I realize, oh no, I have worked on this project um, and that work has been gone. Then if that's the case, you can click on this dot, dot, dot bottom and then redo the last import. This will bring back to that original version that I was working on. Therefore, uh, I, I, I don't have to worry about losing that stuff. Then I can like my version of the project, the version of the server project, the two different projects. In that case, in this version, like you wanna actually copy this project so that you can keep, let's say like a license purchase process project. And then like you're gonna uh, uh, copy it. And then you wanna update this with the server version. And then that way you can, um, <clears throat> sort of like merge the work uh, sort of like manually uh, uh, by copy and paste and stuff. Okay. So that's the one, uh, one thing. So if you don't have to worry about that, then you can just simply click on update button and then uh, move on. So that's a one uh, important thing that like can make sure that like you need to communicate with others and who is working on the project, that type of things. Okay. But also another thing is that I have already shown there is a version control of the project, which means every time you publish the project as a team or as an individual, doesn't matter. There is this vision, a version history menu. When you click on the version history, then you see all the publish, publishing history. And it typically like when somebody published a project or republish in this, in this case, and then they are, are highly encouraged to type the comments. Uh, explaining what that what are the changes. Then you can see like what other things have been done. And sometimes all of a sudden, maybe the project got uh, you know, broken or somebody added something, uh, but that was not supposed to be added or something like that. Then you can always click on this restore button to get back into the particular version. So for example, so this is showing like from the Tom at the, from the bottom, the Tom published the initial project. And then as a uh, member, the Sarah and Peter downloaded it and they're already working on. And the next time the Sarah republished it. So now the Sarah's version is on a server. And then Tom, I mean, you know, downloaded the Sarah's uh, project and then updated it and then republish. And then the Peter did the same uh, other update and then republish. So now at this point, we have a 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. Then we or Tom realized, or whoever realized, that what Peter did was something that was not supposed to be done, or maybe that because of that, something got broken. So we want to go back to the previous version, which is 3.0, the Tom's version. So in that case, when you click on that restore button, what is going to happen is, that version is going to replace that Peter's version of the project and then uh, register as a 5.0. So now this is the latest version. Okay. And then like, you realize, hey, you know what? Actually, I'm sorry. Like the Peter's version is the one that like, actually we should go with. Then you can restore the Peter's version as well. But anyway, so that at the server, you can click on the restore button and then going back and uh, you know, bringing back the uh, older version if uh, you want to. Okay, so this one is a kind of a team environment, but even like this is useful for the individual use case. So, you know, even like, like you don't have to share with others, uh, which sometimes I actually, you know, do uh, by working by myself and I just publish as myself and then just do the version control at the server. And then like anytime like I feel like, hey, something, this, you know, project got broken or something, or so, you know, something gets too messy or something then I can click on the uh, restore button 
and then bring that you know older version to the latest and then go back to the exploit desktop and the app click on the update button then my project gets to uh, get back to that particular version okay and so that's a, a kind of easy way to sort of like a kind of backup but also version control for the single use case scenario <clears throat> And this is not just a, a project uh, project. This is also for the dashboard uh, and the charts and then data. All the things you publish now have the same capability. So, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, so let's see, for example, um, typical use case is, I'm gonna just kind of uh, open this project. Here's a sales project. And then I have this uh, uh, data frame left hand side and the reports. And also like I have created a bunch of charts and then data rendering step. And then let's say like I have this opportunity dashboard. So typical uh, use case is I first, I wanna publish this dashboard, right? So I'm gonna click on round bottom and make sure the dashboard output looks okay. And I'm gonna click on this publish button. And then I type in the title and it tags if needed, check the private mode check the EDF. Uh, I don't have to check this EDF because I'm gonna publish this e uh, dashboard, but I don't need other people to download the EDF and re-import it because I'm going to uh, publish this whole project. So other people in my team will be able to get the whole project instead of like, you know, part dashboard. Anyway, so I'm gonna uh, click on this publish. And then instead of like publishing myself, I'm gonna use one of the team I'm, uh, I have and then notify team members. That means other people in this team will be notified. And where the team, so the team is for, uh, when you go to the export three page, right hand side, and then you have this like account setting page and under the account setting page, uh, there's a team. And I have already created this kind of sales team. When I click on it, and I, uh, these, are, these are the team members uh, in this team. So they will be notified by the email once I click on this publish button. And I'm cool with it. I want them to know I updated this dashboard and then, oh, I forgot. Uh, oh, this is, this is the first time I published him. So uh, publish that. And then, then let's see like the, where the dashboard is. And here's a dashboard that been published. And as you notice though here, the URL will have that team name. That's the one that um, on the alphabet and numeric and an underscore and a dash. And that's because that becomes a part of the URL. And then one, at this point, I can uh, click on this dot, 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 not just me, but also the other people in my team. So that, that's one thing though. So I don't have to share the team members because this, as you see, as shared by the team. This is like a, all the people in this team own this together. So I don't have to share with them. But if I have other people who are not in the team, then I can click on this and then invite those guys as well. Okay. And then uh, once that's done, then I have um, <clears throat> here is a version history and then scheduling history. So version history is this one, like, I have published only once, but let's say like if I have published a couple of times and other team member published a couple of times, then you see those records and then I can restore the particular versions. And the other thing is, is here is a scheduling history. Um, that, that's, um, uh, let's, let's take a look at the, this one that I just published, there's no schedule, but I'm sure I have something that, uh, let's see, I have a feeling I have a, dashboard and there you go here's a sales dashboard there you go so this one like i have been scheduling uh almost like every day let's see every day uh eight o'clock uh eastern time right and i check the subscribe button so that means uh, i get uh, this email notification with the thumbnail every day but not just that if i go here in the scheduling history and these are the, all the schedule history in the past. And that means every time the schedule runs, it stores uh, this information and also the thumbnail image. That's the same thumbnail image that is being sent uh, me by the email. So let's say like, hey, what happened to like, you know, April 6th, uh, if I click on the view button, 
and I can see that sort of like a snapshot of that uh, uh, particular day. Okay, so that's that version of history, but also um, this is like a dashboard, but also um, like what I was working on is that, oops, here's a dashboard and I published it. And then, you know, like now other people who want to sort of collaborate with me, right, in the, in the same team, and I can download that project. So in order to make that happen, I have to publish this project. So if I click on this publish button, and then this publisher project turned out has already been um, published. So um, if I go to this open browser button and I can see here is a project page, but if I have changed this chart or dashboard or whatever the things, then I can add the comments and I have added a new chart or something like that, and then click on republish button. And I don't, uh, I'm not gonna notify those guys this time, but I can just click on okay. I can choose whichever I want. And once it's published, I'm basically like uploading this project to the server. And once it's published, I can open the same project. And then only the difference, basically the same, only the difference is if I come to this version history, then uh, here's a new entry. And then like, at this point, the guy said, like, hey, you know what? Like, let's go back to the original, uh, the previous version. I can click on this restore button as well. Okay, so that's the very uh, sort of kind of basic of uh, how the pro uh, project share and the team work together so that you can collaborate with others effectively with exploratory. Uh, let's go back to the slide. And this is like a last piece. Uh, so who uh, can use this team and project share? We added these two new features for the, uh, from the business plan. So if you happen to be in a personal plan, uh, you can't use this team and project share, but uh, if you're in a business plan, uh, you can use these uh, features as well. And the storage and processing volume, those are like a, a processing volume is, is something for like when you schedule the dashboard and stuff. Storage is where uh, you wanna, uh, it matters for the project share. Um, it matters for the data share and the dashboard share as well, but especially the project share. Uh, so it depends on the plan. Um, these are the um, uh, uh, capacity. Okay. So now some of you might ask, hey, um, uh, I can't really you know, share on your exploratory server because our company is very up, uh, restrict about you know, security and privacy and stuff. So in that case, there's something called exploratory collaboration server, uh, which is basically, uh, here's the exploratory server. And then, you know, this basically, when I said exploratory server, meaning like our hosted version of cloud, uh, cloud hosted version of the server. But this same thing, uh, you know, because you can't bring anything outside of your firewall or inside, uh, you know, outside of your company's network. That's the problem. If that's the case, you can install the equivalent version on your server or maybe your host, you know, cloud server. Your cloud server or physical server, whatever it could be. Some people say that on premise, uh, but you can install the exploratory server. We call it exploratory collaboration server. And it's, it can run on a Linux, which is basically the Docker image. So as long as you have the Docker, you can just quickly um, install and uh, up to run. Okay, so, so that's that co uh, collaboration server. Basically it provides the same capability. One big difference is because you manage your server, there's no limitation uh, from exploratory side. There's no limitation of like capacity or uh, you know, storage data size or processing data size and so on. It's all uh, on you in a way. So it's um, in, in some sense, it's more econo it can be economical. Um, but you have to make sure you have a kind of like a big enough machine so that uh, you know, with a big enough uh, hard disk. Okay. And if you want to know like how, you know, what's the minimum tech spec and we have that those like a minimum tech spec for collaboration server as well as exploited desktop as well. So um, you might want to take, uh, uh, find it uh, at our website. Okay. So that's it for today. So today, like I basically talked about like how the exploited desktop and exploited server 
sort of like kind of as a platform, like how it works together so that you can collaborate with others. You can share your insights and data with others uh, to collaborate effectively. So these are the two things, but also with the new, uh, recently added new features, team and the project share, uh, we think uh, this is gonna help uh, the collaboration much more efficient and it's much more uh, kind of a more kind of weird English, but a much more collaborative way. And as always, we are looking into this space. So we are rapidly improving uh, the project sharing and also team um, usage or usability and not just usability, but also the capability um, uh, as well. So if you have any feedback, please share with me. Uh, my information is, uh, I'm gonna share that later. Um, so, uh, maybe, sorry, here, my information is khan at exporty.io. Okay, and then, so um, that's it for today's seminar, but uh, for the future seminar or the past recording, go to our website and then under the LAN, go to online seminar menu. And then uh, you can see the future uh, schedules as well as when you scroll down to the bottom, uh, there's a link to the past recording as well. And also, if you want to learn how to use exploratory, uh, we have a bunch of our contents. Uh, go to the learn, and then underneath, there's how to tutorials and how to video. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, joining this seminar. Uh, my, if you have any questions, if you have any feedback, please uh, reach out to me. And also we have the Twitter, uh, Exploratory Data. Um, that's where like, we make announcements of the seminar, the new features and new releases and so on as well. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much. And then now like, I'd like to open up for the Q&A session.